It's been a few years since I last upgraded my laptop, but recently I've had a lot of issues with my old one and it just happens to be that time of the year again when Apple came out with their new laptop lineup. Welcome to a day in my life with the M4 MacBook Pro. Why do I feel so blue? Uh, I need a meal like you. Uh, I need some bitches, some friends, and some jewelry. I'm trying to get like you. Uh, sign me a deal like you. Uh, Four on my whip like you. Uh, give me a gun and pop me a nigga. I'm trying to be lit like you. Uh, flex on the ground like you. Uh, show all my bands like you. Uh, I talk to my friends, I talk to my family. They don't understand like you. Uh, follow the plan like you. Uh, I need some fans like you. Uh, make them all stand like you. But I don't understand why I'm not like you. They say comparison is a thief. Before we get to working, let's quickly go over the specs of my laptop. I have the M4 Max with 48GB of RAM and a 1TB SSD in the silver colorway. I didn't go with the new nano texture display this time, since the reflection has never really bothered me even though I work next to a window. Right now we're at 100% battery life and Apple claims that the laptop has up to a 24 hour battery life, which we're gonna be putting to a test today and see if that's true at all. And this is probably one of the most important things to me since we both know that this laptop can crush pretty much any task you throw its way. But the real question is, can the battery hold up? And that's why I'm using HDMI instead of USB-C to connect to my monitor. When I first picked up the 16-inch M4, I could have sworn there was a noticeable difference in weight when comparing to the 16-inch M1 Pro. I checked on Apple's website and apparently the M4 Max actually weighs a little more than the M1 Pro. And if I didn't know this, I could have sworn the M4 Max was lighter. Now, in pretty much every single one of my videos, I get questions from people on how to start coding. And there's many different answers to this, but in my opinion, the main thing in the beginning stages is just making the friction between you having the idea of learning to code to you actually starting to code as small as possible. And because of this, I like this platform called Scrimba. They have a lot of different courses on different topics and experience levels. Some are free, others are for their subscribers, but they're all taught by seasoned devs. Something that separates Scrimba from all the other platforms is their unique teaching technology that they call scrims. So in every lesson you can pause at any time and directly edit the code you see. Also, since Scrimba is all about getting your hands on the keyboard, in almost every single lesson the teacher will prompt you to take over and directly solve the challenge. It's almost like having a tutor right next to you. Now, for anyone wanting to get into web development, this front-end developer career path is a great starting point. It's gonna take you from literal zero to being able to build projects on your own and they have partnered with Mozilla MDN on this one to ensure you learn all the best practices used in professional software development. They also have a whole section dedicated for getting hired so you're gonna learn what kind of projects to put in your resume 
the kinds of questions you can expect in interviews and things of this nature. Also, like I mentioned, there's a lot of free resources here. For example, they have just added this TypeScript course and this AI course to their free tier. And that's why I like Scrimba so much, because you can literally go in here and see if you enjoy the format before committing to anything. So if you're someone who's been wanting to get into coding, but just doesn't know where to start, then give Scrimba a shot. Last time I collabed with them, a lot of people commented on how much they liked the platform, which was super nice to see. I linked some of my favorite courses in the description for you to check out, and a big shout out to Scrimba for supporting the channel and sponsoring the video. So right now we're on the new center stage camp and as you can see the camera is following me if I go to the left it's gonna come to the left if I go to the right it's gonna follow me to the right and even if I stand up it's still going to be following me now I can go all the way to the right and it's still keeping up with me this is actually pretty impressive that it can follow me all the way here and all the way to the left as well like right now I'm touching my window right here to be completely honest, I don't know if this is something that you would actually use in real life, but I guess it's cool if you're writing something on a whiteboard and you just want to move around while you're doing it and show the other people in the meeting as well. Or if you just want to pull up the meetings flexing on everybody that you got the newest MacBook, then this is a great way to do it without actually saying that you got the latest MacBook. But yeah, I mean, the camera is cool and all and the quality is pretty decent as well, but most likely I won't be using this much. Just wrapping up work here. It's around 6 p.m. right now. I'll eat something and then I'll go to the upstairs co-working area with my friends. But look at this. The battery is literally dying, bro. The battery is literally dying. Now, I've been using the laptop throughout the whole day. Obviously, I was working and stuff. But where's the 24-hour battery life? Like, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Apple sold me a dream, but I got nightmares instead. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Look at this battery graph. Like, it's just down only. Is the graph supposed to go down that fast? Here it says that my battery health is normal, but I'm actually kind of disappointed about this. One of the major reasons I wanted to upgrade my laptop in the first place was so that I get a good battery life, which I am not seeing anywhere near 24 hour battery life. This has been from 8 a.m. until now 6 p.m., so 10 hours. But yeah, let me know if this is normal or should I exchange my laptop because damn, we only got 10 hours of battery life. Now I have to charge it. and a few of my friends live in the same apartment building so we just like to get together and go to the co-working area upstairs and everyone is just working on their own projects and stuff which is super dope i was editing my youtube short which i did with jet brains and one of the coolest things about doing youtube is being able to work with so many dope brands and it's the best feeling when people leave comments about a brand that i worked with saying that they like their products but yeah, when it comes to editing, the M4 had no issues and for the first time ever I was able to just leave the timeline resolution at 4K and I wasn't having any buffering when I was playing back my video. It's things like this which just make me appreciate the laptop so much more because this allows me to enjoy creating videos even more than I already do. And of course the rendering speeds are lightning fast. So I was just editing this new video I'm about to drop on your heads. Actually this video that you're watching right now, but look at this. The MacBook video I uploaded yesterday got 40k in a day, bro. 2025, we either going to the top or we falling off. Nothing in between. We either going to the fucking top and we taking over this tech YouTube or we falling off. But something I actually wanted to show you was the brightness difference between the M4 Max and the M3 Max. So my homeboy Vino here, he got the M3. 
Hold on, let me get the M4. So on the left is the M3 Max, and on the right is the M4 Max. They both got the same exact wallpaper. And I mean, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but in real life, there's a clear difference. Like, Milo, come check this out. Which one is brighter, the right or the oh, left? Shit. This one for sure. The right one? Yeah. What about you, Jamie? I think my. Uh, uh, can you drop your thoughts? I think my M1 lowest spec actually is brighter oh, shit. than all of them. This M1. So What's the specs here? Uh, we got a we got a whopping eight gigs of RAM. Uh, we have a five hundred gigabyte SSD. Ooh. I think this is a monster machine. But as for this, insane, insane specs, bro. Which one's which one's brighter? It actually is is incredible. This is so so much brighter than the mm -hmm. one on the left. It's it's kind of like a flashbang. And Luke, you said you were working with this brightness all day. Yeah. Go to an eye doctor. <laughs> Come to an eye doctor, yeah, get, get it checked out. Something you guys also need to realize is that you don't need the latest and greatest MacBook. Us influencers, you know, we make a big return on investment when we get the newest MacBooks and stuff. Like, I mean, just look at the latest video. I don't want to say any numbers, but like this MacBook has been a great investment so far. So just keep that in mind when you're seeing these videos and don't feel FOMO to upgrade just because you see these videos. And also I bought this through my business. So it's a business expense for me, which means that I instantly get the VAT back, which is like 25 and a half percent. So you can think of it as a 25 and a half percent discount on the MacBook. And also because it's a business expense, I end up paying less taxes because I bought this MacBook. So there's all these legal workarounds that are happening behind the scenes that you're not seeing. That's why influencers are able to afford all this new tech instantly when it comes out so just keep that in mind if your current laptop is doing fine then just keep using that laptop don't upgrade unless you have to upgrade but yeah that's my message to you because i know i'm kind of part of the problem as well making these videos